Hey there! My name is Stan Prokopenko. I'm going to be doing a series of video tutorials on drawing the head from various angles. Hopefully there will be some interest and I can continue making more of these for you guys. In this first video, I'm going to attempt to summarize and simplify Andrew Loomis' approach to drawing the head. Here we go. If we remove the ear, lips, eyes, and nose from the head, we're left with two simple masses. The first is a ball for the cranium, and the second is a boxy shape for the jaw. The cranium is spherical, but with the sides flattened, so chopping off a slice from both sides of that ball gets us a simplified but close representation of the cranial mass. When drawing the head, I'll start with the circle for the ball. And after a few failed attempts, rip out your hair, take a deep breath, and try again. But seriously, make sure that it looks like a circle and at least the height and width are the same. The oval is a bit more tricky. The height will always be the same no matter what angle you're drawing the head from. It's two-thirds the height of the circle. So I'll usually look at the area from the center of the circle to the top and divide that into thirds. And the top third will be where the oval begins. And the same for the bottom. The width of the oval depends on the direction the person is looking. Compare the width of the front plane to the width of the side plane. The top portion of the oval falls on the corner of the forehead. This is where the front plane meets the side plane. This area is usually rounded, so it's open to the artist's interpretation. But I've found that it usually lies near the end of the eyebrow. So as I just showed, we indicate the left and right turn of the head by the width of the oval. Now we need to find the up and down tilt. This is indicated by an angle along the side plane. If the head is tilted up, the angle will point up, and if the head is tilted down, the angle will point down. The degree of the tilt will determine how steep to make this line. I like to use the angle from the ear to the brow. From there, I'll continue that line over to the front plane, and since this line represents the brow, pay attention to the angle from one brow to the other. Then draw a curve parallel to the first one, this time starting from the bottom of the oval. This represents the bottom of the nose. Drawing the same line again from the top of the oval would bring you to the hairline. Now since the face can be broken down into nearly perfect thirds, from chin to nose to brow to hair, we can use the measurements we already found to find the length down to the chin. Observe the general shape of the jaw and draw on the major angles starting from the brow, coming down to the chin, and going around to the side plane of the head. It's usually about halfway into the oval or a little bit further back. We've already found the side plane of the cranium, now we need to do the same thing with the cheek and jaw area. There's a rhythm that starts at the top of the ear and curves down to the outside of the chin. Then find the center line of the face. Remember, this is the center of the front plane, not the center of the whole head width. And finish with the neck. Now that we have the foundation of the head established, we can finish it by putting in all the features. Eyes, nose, lips, ear, hair, jaw, cheeks, chin. Don't worry, I'll explain this step in more detail in another video. Each feature deserves its own tutorial. This approach is really good to establish the perspective of the head. A good exercise is to try to think about the head as a simple, elongated box. The angles on the front plane of the face, such as hairline, brow line, nostrils, lips, and chin, will be the same as the angles on the front plane of the box. The angle from the brow line to the ear is the same as the angle on the side plane of the box. These angles are really important because they establish the head as a three-dimensional form in space. Let's go through that one more time. Start with a circle for the cranium, oval for the side plane of the head, angle to show the person is looking up or down, draw an identical curve to find the nose, and double that distance to find the chin. Attach the jaw and you have a three-dimensional representation of the head, ready for the features. At first, this approach might seem a bit technical, with a lot of important details to remember, but once you get the hang of it, it actually becomes really easy. So get that sketchbook out and practice this a hundred times with various angles. Did you like this video? Your friends might too. Please help me out and share on your favorite social network. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter on proco.com.